All right, everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar for today. I um, want to take a moment and, and thank everyone for being um, with us today here at Cross Cultural Solutions. Uh, today we're going to focus on um, the Cross Cultural Solutions International Service Experience and how it connects with social science and education majors. Um, first off, we'll start off and introduce ourselves. My name is Sudi Nalo and I am one of the managers of academic partnerships here at Cross Cultural Solutions and we have with us today as well uh, my name is Megan Hotchkiss. I serve as the other manager. Uh, Sudi and I both work with uh, high schools, community colleges, and universities to uh, partner with uh, you all on the smallest individual student to full-blown group projects to get your students um, in the CCS experience. And as Sudi said, we appreciate you taking the 45 minutes out of your day to uh, learn a little bit more about us. And if you have any questions, we do have the live chat feature available. So in your uh, sign-in, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar bar, you can type a question and we can answer it as we go. Or we'll also have the official Q&A at the end of the broadcast. Yeah, perfect. So to just double check and make sure that everyone can hear us, would you please either send in a chat and or raise your hand if you can't hear us. Hopefully each of you are well versed in um, how GoToMeeting works. So I'm just going to type in here, can everyone hear us? Okay, just let us know if you can't so we can go ahead and correct the sound. Um, but send some type of indication that you can hear us and uh, hopefully we can proceed from there. Ah, perfect. So we've got an answer that you can hear us. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, the webinar today is going to focus on a couple of key things that will um, give you some more information about cross-cultural solutions and who we are as an organization and what exactly it is that we do. Then we're going to talk about cross-cultural solutions and the social science connection. And we're going to share with you a program model overview and also discuss where our social science opportunities are throughout the world. Um, we'll also talk about cross-cultural solutions and the education connection, not the social science connection, but the education connection. And we'll talk about the program model as it relates to education. Then we'll look at the overall program process um, and what the logistics may look like as far as planning your program. So next up, we'll talk about um, cross-cultural solutions and who we are as an organization. Um, so Cross-Cultural Solutions was founded in 1995, and we have 30,000 alumni. And basically, what we do as it relates to social science and education is we address critical global issues um, by providing meaningful and su sustainable service opportunities to communities abroad. Cross-Cultural Solutions operates programs year-round in majority of the locations that we operate in. There are a few seasonal um, programs in, with, within cross-cultural solutions, but majority of our programs are year-round. This is what makes our programming sustainable in that we address critical global issues on an annual basis. Um, we're in these countries for um, the long haul, and we have extensive commitments to NGO partners and country. And um, we work side-by-side -side with local community members to create mutually beneficial opportunities both for students and the communities that we serve. Um, we know that when uh, colleges, universities, and even students are looking at going abroad, this can be a very exciting opportunity, but it can also be one that you want to approach cautiously. And Cross-Cultural Solutions has an extensive career um, and reputation in the field of international volunteering. You can see some of the news and media outlets where our programs have been featured um, in USA Today, the Today Special, CNN, Time Magazine, the Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, and New York Times. And we encourage you to look up the reputation of cross-cultural solutions in the communities that we've worked in to see that our reputation matches the uh, service and civic engagement that we provide for students. So um, if you're looking for experiences in your respective majors, you can rest assuredly that cross-cultural solutions will provide a safe and secure opportunity for your academic experience. 
Um, so next, what we would like to do um, before um, we have we, we go further into the presentation, we want to take a moment um, and we want to talk about cross-cultural solutions and how cross-cultural solutions connects to the social sciences. And to start, what we'd like to do is show you a quick video um, that will provide you with a visual um, for cross-cultural solutions in social sciences, where we have individuals talking about their experiences in country and how these experiences um, then provide them with, um, I guess, practical experience, what we call experiential learning within the social sciences. Um, and so hopefully this video will provide you with a, um, a more detailed overview of what a day-to-day -day experience would look like for a social science major. So hopefully you'll find this video helpful and um, will increase the volume so that you can hear a bit more about the experience. I came to India because it has such an interesting cultural history and the people and the places here are unlike anything else in the world. I'm teaching women and young girls conversational English and basic nutrition and health information. A lot of the women um, are actually migrants from other parts of India, and so they come to Delhi seeking a better life for their children and for themselves. The women have confidence because the NGO is there that focuses on women and children, and so I think a lot of the women, it's their first time experiencing something like that and exploring who they are. It's really dynamic, and I think the relationships I've built here are what I will bring back. People are very eager to learn, very eager to learn about me and where I'm from, and also they work very hard at getting to know the things we teach them. I guess I just gained a huge amount of respect for the people here and how eloquently they handle daily life. CCS really gives you the opportunity to help people and to interact with the culture you wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. So it's a very good way to learn about other people and how they live and to make a difference. So that's a very short and sweet visual into um, uh, what, cross what types of work cross-cultural solutions does abroad. This is an example of teaching English and women's empowerment in um, India. And so as a social science major, we know that there are some students that may be studying women and gender studies. We also know that they're cultural studies students. We also know that you have social work, psychology, anthropology, sociology majors, also communications and linguistics majors that all fall into the social sciences. And for each one of these majors, this particular volunteer placement experience would touch upon um, maybe some of the theory and academic-based learning that maybe that you will have in the classroom. And this experience, for example, in India and in New Delhi would provide you the experiential learning piece. And so Cross-Cultural cross Solutions provides both short-term and long-term programs that would enhance your academic experience in the classroom. These experiences will range from one to 12 weeks. And so now what we're going to do is to talk about the program model as it relates to um, the social science major before we move into education. And our website is very resourceful. We are excited to share that the website will be updated. Um, in the coming days, but in the interim today, feel free to visit the website and you'll be able to see additional videos um, that will hopefully give you a visual of the different types of placements that we that we offer and what the experiences may be like. Um, and I see we have a question um, that asks uh, about whether or not Cross-Cultural Solutions has partnered with any universities on um, teaching initiatives. Uh, we partnered with Drexel University, and I'll let Megan share a little bit of information about that partnership. Yes. Um, hi, it's Megan. I actually manage the Drexel has a master's in international education. Um, it's a top 10 program in the IEP area, and basically for their master's students, they have to do something similar to if you're thinking like a co-op, a, 
uh, theory type study like a social work or an honors thesis, that type of program. So we had two of their, their cohorts are pretty small. They're typically 15 to 20 people and about typically 10 to 15 percent are interested in going abroad. So we had two of their master students that um, as, their inter as their senior thesis for their master's program, both actually went to Brazil this past year. Um, the students can go on any of the 10 CCS programs. They both just happened to do it. And one of them studied early uh, childhood education and sort of the differences between uh, she organizes daycare and early learning facilities at her in her home. And so she worked in a early childhood area in one of the favelas in Brazil. And then through her academic research, she was able to compare and contrast the process, development, implementation of the daycare system um, by meeting with different members of the community, doing different site visits, and then the other um, person is a staff member actually at a university in the United States and she did the course on leading academic programs as a professor and she's actually, uh, Sudi's working with her, she's actually leading her first trip. So whether it's um, early childhood, elementary, uh, pre-K, K through 12 or college, um, we do have partnerships. So that's one example of um, and really the experience, um, typically when we partner with education schools, it depends on what type of education the student is studying and what type of practical uh, programming they need. And then also what is the theoretical um, area that they're doing. So if you are more of the K through 12, we do have lesson planning capabilities. Our in-country directors can help with that. So if you'd like to chat a little bit more about that offline, um, be happy to sort of go through with you the developmental process. Yeah, and these partnerships typically with the schools will fall in line with the learning goals and objectives that you, the college or university, would like to see achieved through your programs. So basically where Cross-Cultural Solutions resides in that process is you let us know the academic learning goals and objectives, which Megan mentioned that you're looking to achieve through your specific university program. So Drexel has identified their learning goals and objectives for their program, and CCS partners with Drexel University in helping their students achieve that. Um, also, Guilford College partners, partners with Cross-Cultural Solutions in their programming development, and we enhance programs that they have existing on campus through the programs that we offer abroad. And basically, within these partnerships, what Cross-Cultural Solutions is looking to do is to make the organizing of your international service and service learning programs easy. So that's where the partnership comes in with your respective college or university. And as Megan mentioned, you know, we're happy to share more detailed information with you about that partnership process, okay? Um, so basically for the social sciences connections, our program model focuses on four different components. First, it starts off with the volunteer work and placement, which centers around your specific area of focus within your major. Um, and the volunteer work takes place about four to five hours during the day. And the volunteer work takes place Monday through Friday. So in the morning, you will wake up and have breakfast within the CCS home base, and you will transport you to your service site. Um, your service site is determined on your skills and interests. Again, we would use your major as a focus area. You'll volunteer four to five hours during the day. Then you'll participate um, after lunch in cultural and learning activities that will provide a holistic experience and that, that you'll use to enhance your volunteer work during the day. Then there's free time in the afternoons, which will allow you to explore the local community and to interact and engage. And all of this centers around the home-based model for CCS, where we provide you with a safe and secure opportunity to interact and engage with CCS. So we'll go through each of these program components in detail um, for the program model. But next, we'll just start off in looking at what the actual majors and areas of focus are. Um, let's see, what, it looks like we have another question. Um, so our next question is, um, I'm from a campus um, at Ohio State, and our campus has a focus 
on the social sciences and education, which is early and middle. Um, you also have a large population of both faculty and students who have focuses on service learning. Is there a um, cross-cultural solutions opportunity to talk about um, these, these partnerships? So again, um, these are perfect opportunities within the areas of social sciences to partner both with your faculty, staff, and students for opportunities. And we'll talk about the different ways later on that these program opportunities can take place. Um, in general, um, it can take place from an internship perspective. So for instance, if in early childhood education there are a certain number of contact hours or internship hours that have to be completed by students in order to complete their course curriculum, we can provide those opportunities via internships. We can also provide opportunities to partner with your college or university through um, faculty-led programs. So if there are specific courses within the curriculum, as you mentioned, faculty and staff in the service learning programs, we can um, partner through those programs by offering faculty-led programs where the faculty members may teach a early childhood development course um, at the beginning of the semester, then two weeks or a week within the semester, you go abroad to Costa Rica and you volunteer in educational schools in Costa Rica. That's an example. Um, and then there's also individual student opportunities, just volunteer opportunities that students can have to go abroad if they are um, social science majors. And this can be housed, um, just to conclude, this can be housed under what we call a service learning agreement. And we have sample agreements we'd be happy to share. Or um, if you're, uh, sometimes they're called memorandums of understanding, memorandums of agreement. If your university has a pre-existing agreement, we're happy to work within that. Um, and basically what that serves is, say, like you're a faculty or an advisor, that's just kind of like the stamp of approval saying that your university has vetted, has examined cross-cultural solutions on points of safety, risk management, health. Um, making sure that our academic uh, programs meet your academic accreditation certification needs. So, um, for example, I'm in the middle of signing one right now with the School of Social Work from the University of Georgia, and they've gone through the whole process of making sure that the national MSW licensures uh, cross-cultural solutions meet. So, as an example, they vetted CCS programs and found that two of our programs met with their field work requirements so that their students would be permitted to go to either Peru or South Africa because those programs within the full CCS model met with their specific academic opportunities. So that's really how CCS as an organization is very flexible because we realize each university has their own requirements and then even each major within the university can have your own accreditation licensing issue. So if you let us know, we can basically help you sort of walk through the CCS model and that's what Sudi and I help you do is sort of realize, okay, you know, CCS has 10 programs, maybe all of them would work or maybe specific countries and even sometimes within the country specific types of volunteer placements would work for your faculty, students, or individual course needs. So be happy to chat. Um, a little bit more about that as well. Yeah, and as we talk about those specific areas to find where cross-cultural solutions may fit within your specific departments, we look at areas of focus. And our areas of focus as it relates to social sciences are in the areas of promoting childhood development, providing elder care, addressing disability and accessibility needs, providing skill-based training, HIV AIDS education and support, improving access to health care, and women's education and empowerment. And so within each of these areas, what Cross-Cultural Solutions does is provide direct volunteer uh, service opportunities within these international communities. So for instance, in promoting childhood development, um, students, faculty, and staff, when they arrive in country, would be would be given an orientation to the community and, and via that uh, orientation you would develop um, you would support teachers and work as teachers aides 
learning about international childhood development practices within prospective regions. And you also have the opportunity to design curriculums and activities in country to promote childhood development. So you're able to bring um, best practices from the United States and also learn about best practices for respective international communities, merge the two together to improve childhood development. And that's just an example of what the volunteer internship practical experience would be. But again, these are majors of focus that we hope would connect with your respective major areas that are within your schools. If you do have some that fall outside of this, as Megan mentioned, we're more than happy to explore those and talk about those majors of um, focus or areas of focus that you have at your school, and then we can talk about what specific service opportunities would be available directly in country for those specific um, areas, if any of them aren't listed here. So that's a general overview of social sciences and how the social sciences are connected to international service opportunities. Again, that connection comes from um, identifying an area of focus and then matching that with a service opportunity that's available in country. And then we're going to um, now talk a little bit more about education and how education is connected. And then we're going to bring everything together to kind of talk about what a day in the life of a volunteer would look like what the programs focus on, and what are a bit more about the logistics. So Megan is going to talk to us now um, a little bit more about um, early childhood, I mean, education in, um, in our programs abroad. To start, what we'll do is share a quick video about education opportunities abroad, and then Megan's going to talk in a little bit more. Well, that's hard, but I actually have like, to talk to you. And there's not a lot because like, one in the world didn't know how to write our name at Tyra Ryder name, and all took this requirement of personal attention. Because they can't get that here. They're so appreciative of like, tiny little things. Just about a week and a half ago, I was placed at the tiny at the autistic school. And that has been absolutely amazing. Each day is different and interesting. And I've learned so much just about week and a half. So to be able to help and to have them tell me that I'm doing a job and they're happy to have me has been absolutely amazing. The teaching's great and the placement has been wonderful, but the, being in such a different place and going out and meeting people really is an eye-opener that, that people don't live the same way that you live in the States, that people are, are completely different from you, but completely the same. And just seeing the things can exist so differently but work so well, it's really just fantastic. Yeah, and then we have a whole thing for the community, you know, from primary schools, primary schools, secondary schools, schools teacher training colleges, vocational colleges, HNDA hospitals, they are sharing the teaching staff, they are also sharing different ways of coming up with different teaching materials for the kids. And I think it's a uh, two-way track, giving and receiving, both and and every end is benefiting from one another. I would encourage people in the world to join the program. This is a nice place for gathering a good learning experience. Whether you choose Tanzania or one of our other programs around the world, cross-cultural solutions allows you to see a country for the eyes of its people. Contact us today to start with a practical solution for detail. So we are going to um, go over the same pattern that Sudi did with the social sciences with the education connection. And again, just to recap, 
the whole CCS experience is a holistic experience that not just traveling, not just studying, but we truly believe that it's the students and faculty's entire time in the country that's giving them that service learning connection, that's giving them the chance to apply all of the information that they're learning in the classroom in a foreign country and give as well as receive. So again, our program is centered on the home base. We have the three-part volunteer uh, practical experience with the cultural learning activities and the free time. Um, with education, as the video mentioned, we have all levels that your students can work with. We have early childhood, um, which some people refer to as pre-K. We have K through 12. We have uh, ESL, teaching English as a foreign language. We have special education, working with students with disabilities. And we also have, uh, if the students are focusing in things like public health, geography, if they want those specific um, centers of focus, we have plenty of opportunity for them to participate in the programs. Um, and this is a great opportunity that they don't always get in their teacher training in the U.S. to really apply that theory and academic knowledge. Um, I had the chance of meeting with a special education student um, from Connecticut that had worked with me at an autistic school in Peru, and she said, you, she's never been challenged so much because you see the theory and see what she learned in the United States and then seeing a completely different way of dealing with similar type children. So really giving them an additional experience to what your uh, university is providing. And it looks like we have another question. Yeah, another question. Um, the question is, will the presentation be available after the webinar? And it absolutely will be available. Um, you can feel free to, um, we'll, we'll send it out to all of the participating um, members that are online today. We'll send a copy of the um, PowerPoint presentation for you all to look at afterwards. So if you have to, if you have to get off early, um, completely understand. So um, now transitioning into, oh, CD needs to click. Um, Going into the internship practical experience, this is really the heart of the CCS program. Um, the areas of focus that work very well with most academic um, education majors in the U.S. are educating at-risk youth. Sometimes they're homeless, sometimes they come from broken homes, but really giving them that one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, promoting childhood development, a lot of our partnerships are with, you know, age zero to kindergarten and really giving them that foundation to be successful in school. Um, special education, like I mentioned, the autistic school, we have a lot of partnerships with homes for uh, Mother Teresa centers for the disabled and dying or a lot of governmental schools where they have the teachers, but the teachers are understaffed, so it's really the CCS volunteers that give the children that one-on-one -on -one attention, like the person in the video mentioned, teaching them to write their name. Um, and finally, a lot of what we have is teaching English. And um, I always caution people, it's not just teaching English for communication, but it's also for enhancing their lifestyle. For example, we have a placement in Morocco where a lot of these women uh, maybe didn't get to graduate from school, maybe didn't go to school. and they're maybe single mothers and they want to engage in enterprise. So they self-organized a group where our teachers can come in and teach them English so they can have their own business, so they can help tutor their children. So it's really finding out not just the teaching of English, but what is the cultural societal reasons that people are interested in learning um, sort of the international language. So to move on from here, um, you may have to zoom in on here, but this is just a chart, and it basically goes over the top bar are all of our 10 CCS program sites, and then the left are the areas of focus. So this has all of the areas of focus, not just social services and education, but it really gives you a nice visual. So for example, Ghana. You can work with children in childcare. There's working in schools. Um, it is also assisting teachers in special education. 
and then working with community organization, women's empowerment, professional experience. And this is when Sudi mentioned that we created the areas of focus because it was a, a way to sort of quantify how the different CCS experiences were categorized. But sometimes there is some overlap. So if you, this chart really shows you the whole areas that CCS works and the countries that we've been invited to. Um, sometimes the question is, well, why isn't every area in every country? Sometimes we're not allowed to work. For example, some health placements, they don't allow volunteers to come in. Sometimes um, in the schools, there may not be a need. Because CCS is so focused on meeting the needs of the local community, we do not ever create projects. We always partner with local organizations. So the difference in the areas is these areas that we work are where the local community comes and says we have the need. And this focuses very well. A lot of departments, um, when they're coming to us and they want to create a, a partnership, for education majors, for social work majors. They really want to create a sustainable partnership. So we have a partnership with the University of Michigan, which has been going on around five years. And one of the things they like is that their students can go year after year to South Africa. They're sending different students. The students may be working at different places, but they're able to go back to that same community and see sort of the development, the sustainability. So that is um, one of the areas that we pride ourselves on. So not only are your students getting to meet their academic needs and their major focuses, but they also can say that they were part of a sustainable movement that is really working from the ground up. And just to quickly add to that, um, let's give you a, a general idea of where CCS operates programs. Cross-Cultural Solutions operates programs in Asia, Africa, and in Latin America. In Asia, we operate programs in India, as well as um, Thailand. In Africa, we operate programs in Morocco, Ghana, South Africa, Tanzania, um, and South Africa. And in Latin America, we operate programs in Costa Rica, in Peru, in Brazil, as well as Guatemala. So those are all the opportunities that are available to you in those respective countries. And this table will provide you with the areas of focus that are available in each of those countries. So in thinking about partnership opportunities and opportunities for your students, um, you'll want to take into consideration where CCS operates our programs. And we're more than happy to provide you more detailed information about those specific countries. Um, so we talked a little bit about the volunteer placements and the programs, and now we'll highlight the cultural and learning activities that are available. So again, going back to the cross-cultural solutions model and schedule, okay, you'll start off in the mornings with breakfast. You'll volunteer for four to five hours during the day directly with an NGO partner that cross-cultural solutions matches you with, and then you'll come back to the home base and have lunch, and in the afternoons you'll participate in a cultural and learning activity. And basically the cultural and learning activities are opportunities for you to engage directly with community members and to learn more about. So it's the preparation that you'll need from an in-country perspective to then be a more prepared volunteer in-country. So the cultural and learning activities for social sciences would be considered direct and indirect volunteering. Direct volunteering is your volu uh, the volunteer placements that you do during, during the day. Your indirect service is going to be your cultural and learning activities. So examples of cultural and learning activities for the social sciences would be you have a historical discussion on, um, in Brazil. So this provides you with more of a background on the Afro-Brazilian population so that you'll have a cultural and historical context from an in-country perspective. In Tanzania, you may take a trip to, um, to Arusha, to the genocide of criminal tri <laughs> tribunal. So these provide you with more of a direct in-country experience to how um, historical events within communities impact the day-to-day -day life of the community members. Um, other cultural and learning activities include Spanish language lessons in, in Costa Rica two days a week. We know that many of uh, the social science majors will be working with international populations in your fields. If majority of you, of you are from United States institutions, we know that 
the United States has a growing number of um, generational um, um, residents or citizens that um, English is their second language. And so within social science settings, you may be working with individuals that don't speak English. And so this is a perfect opportunity for you to have Spanish immersion as part of your programming to work with uh, international populations in the United States. And Dharamshala, you'll be able to see a Tibetan cultural institute. So again, giving you that historical perspective to talk about how things that have happened within the world and within these respective communities have contributed to the day-to-day -day life of people. So the cultural and learning activities for education majors. Uh, and these are taking education and where can a... Um, a friend of mine who's a teacher said one of the best things she's learned from traveling and studying abroad is she has the first-hand experience to be able to teach her students and make education come alive. So that's one way that the cultural and learning activities are, you know, taking a person to Thailand and Bangkok and learning the history of the Great Palace and the monarch, going to Ghana and um, learning about the Awe language. And as part of that, they're not only learning the Awe language, but learning about the historical, the colonialization process, how most Ghanaian families speak at least English and their local dialect. Um, in Peru, obviously, they have the Incan and history with the um, visiting the different archaeological ruins. And at the same time, the Peru uh, guide is actually a student that was in one of the CCS volunteer placements learning English about 10 years ago when the CCS program started. Um, in Morocco, one of the best uh, things that I like about all of CCS cultural learning activities is we invite guest speakers to talk about these social, historical, political events. So they'll actually bring someone in to talk about the educational system. And this is a great example of how if you were leading a faculty-led course or if you had specific departmental goals, we could actually request that during the week or during the time that your students were there to have these type of specialized teachers. So those are just a few examples for social science and education. Um, this is where we can get some of the semi-custom program models. So if you're sending, you know, social science, health education majors, if you're sending students with uh, studying special education, we can try to customize the cultural and learning activities to your specific major focus area so that then if the students are completing that research, if they're doing a paper, if they're doing a presentation, this would be a living, breathing research information gathering process, as well as they're fun and educational at the same time. So. These are just a handful that we picked out of our list. Um, when the new website launches, one of the new interactive features is going to be giving great examples of cultural learning activities. Um, so hopefully next week, if we don't get any more bad weather up here in New York. So anything else you'd like to add, Sudi? Nope. OK. No. Um, so now we're transitioning into free time. So again, as Sudi mentioned, you have the wake up, have breakfast, do your volunteer experience in the morning, come back, have lunch, you'll do your cultural and learning activity. So there's two areas that your volunteers will have free time. It can be anywhere from the early afternoon and evenings during the week to the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, we do not have volunteer placements at all. So that's when the students typically are doing their larger traveling, safaris, visiting Machu Picchu, things like that. So during the week, a lot of times the free time activities are centered around preparations for the next day. Um, if they're teaching, if they're doing lesson plans, if they're um, gathering supplies, things like that that they need to do. And also, it's a time for them to get out and explore the local neighborhood, go to the market. So um, I'll let Sudi talk about the social science free time activities. Yeah, so within the, the, the social sciences, um, volunteers have the opportunity to learn about Christian and Jewish religions in an Islamic country. They can visit um, synagogues. They can also visit Antigua, um, the Gandhi Museum, and in Ghana. And as far as the CCS program structure will be con concern concerning free time and how it's organized, students will organize these activities themselves. So free time is the opportunity for 
you, the faculty, staff, or student to determine what you would like to do. These are just examples of things that individuals have done in the past, but you have the opportunity to structure your free time however you see fit. If you want to rest and relax, you can feel free to do that. If you want to do sightseeing, you can, or if you want to participate in any of these activities, you have that option or flexibility. So again, as Megan was mentioning, this is the time that you can really customize your experience and make it your own. And in terms of education, this is really getting the teachers out of the classroom. Um, I had an education student that went to uh, Machu Picchu, and she was teaching um, third graders about world history. So she got to, she sent me a presentation of herself, and you know, she's teaching about the Incans, and what better way to show your students than you visiting. Um, in Africa, if you're learning about, we all learn about if you're a geography focus. Um, we had students that visited the Cape Point and the Cape Peninsula, the most southern way. And then I had students that were teaching a university professor doing human geography. And she was able to then tie this into a lecture about slave trafficking and the point and where then they went to the New World. So that's, again, the customization. Um, one of our best sites that we have is our summer program in India is actually in uh, Dar in Lower Darshalam, which if you know, um, the Tibetan refugees have set up in Upper Darshalam for the last 50 years. So a lot of our social justice education type professors, you can go and volunteer, and it's this unique atmosphere where you actually have generations of uh, citizens that have actually been born to you have a Tibetan population that is, have been getting all of the resources from the world for being exiles, but then you also have the local Indian population that have seen the disparity in wealth. So that's an area that um, we've seen a lot of faculty get in and customize and individual students. Um, another area for linguistics majors, either teachers or social science studios, is in Morocco. Uh, Morocco was colonized by the Spanish and French. And in their national language, a lot of it is written in French and then spoken in the local dialects of Arabic. Um, so you can actually practice both languages. And our program is actually in, in Rabat, the capital. So there's a lot of the historical development and why, how Moroccan culture has manifested. And um, you can even throw Berber and a little bit of Spanish in there. So that's a great way of a linguistics major or a professor is sort of looking at, well, how do, in one area, how does the historical language develop? Um, so again, the free time activities, as Sue mentioned, are completely planned on the individual faculty, staff, or student level. Um, our staff is more than happy to give, um, we have great lists about what other past volunteers groups have done. Um, each home base actually has a log. So what um, volunteers will do is they'll say, oh, I did a weekend trip to Machu Picchu with, with this great, um, you know, Kike, the program director, recommended this tour group. We went, we had a great experience. If somebody goes and says, oh, I've seen, um, you know, Lonely Planet recommended this hostel, but when I got there, it was under construction. You may want to think about planning something else. So we really try to give the volunteers the freedom to plan what they wish, but at the same time, being there if they do need help, if they don't speak the language and they need to make a plane or train or reservation or book a tour, um, our staff are definitely there to help as much or as little as they want. Um, and again, this is the time when Students especially can really use the free time as their focus research or faculty. This is a time when you can actually use it in your teaching. So if you are organizing a faculty led course and you have a say like you have connections in South Africa, you can have a guest speaker come in. If you had a partner university that you wanted to visit, you could organize. Um, we have a program going to Thailand that's being developed by Rutgers and the faculty has been working there 20 years. So they have on the weekends that they're not volunteering with us, their partner university is actually organizing some programs for them. So CCS is really flexible enough to fit in any models. If you can dream it up, we can probably help you uh, plan it, whether it's on an individual student, a university, or a faculty-led uh, level. And so to wrap up in the next five minutes so we can leave some time for you to ask questions, um, 
and us being flexible and really trying to support a lot of what you are wanting to accomplish at your respective campuses. We um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that is fully funded by the program fees that volunteers and participants contribute in order to sustain our programs. Um, individuals will pay a program fee that ranges from about $1,895 for a seven-day, one-week Insight Abroad program. Um, these program fees cover all of your in-country logistics and supports. Again, mentioning that this is 100% tax deductible, um, and this program fee covers your pre-departure assistance, handbooks, um, online portals that will allow you to organize this international experience. It will pay for the volunteer and internship placement. So you, the student, faculty, or staff will let us know your areas of expertise. We'll find the NGO partner where you'll be able to work. These individuals have been vetted by us, as Megan mentioned, using our comprehensive safety and security review. The program fee also covers your cultural and learning activities. So we talked about the, all of the language lessons that you would get, the visits throughout the community, the guest speakers, and the lessons and, and activities. All those fun things um, are included as a part of the program fee. Um, the three meals a day are also included in this. Also the lodging in the in-country ground transportation. And again, these are all things that if you had to coordinate these on your own, it would be extremely costly. So because we operate in these communities year round, we have relationships established, networks and connections that are already established that are safe and secure and are cost effective. Um, your local incoming phone calls. And one very important thing for our college and university partnerships is the comprehensive travel, and med travel medical insurance that's included that also provides evacuation insurance for the areas that we operate programs. And then also a 24-hour hotline that's available for family and friends. So again, there is a program fee cost to participate in the CCS program. But for this, it's to provide you with all of those in-country logistics that, again, if you had to coordinate these on your own, can be pretty costly. Um, and so next, we'll talk a little bit about safety and security, which we've highlighted a little before, but I'm not sure if we want to pull out any key points from this that we feel. If you would like more information about the safety and security, you can feel free to ask us those individually, or you can type them into the chat bar and we'll answer questions about safety and security for any of the countries. Yeah, I think the thing I always like to highlight is you all have risk, health and safety risk review general counsel study abroad offices. Um, we have all of our documentation. We're on special consultative status with the UN. We're a health and safety advisor for the Peace Corps as well. So feel free to ask us um, if they do need even a more extensive, uh, we can't always set up with our, we have a health and health safety director. So, for example, there was the earthquake yesterday in Guatemala. Our, it was, did not affect us. It was 100 miles and offshore from where the CCS program was. However, our in-country director directed all of this volunteers to call home to make sure everything was okay. So that's really where, because we do maintain an on-the-ground network, if something does happen, political, social, economic, natural disasters, we can handle it immediately. We don't have to fly somebody from the United States and country to handle it. Um, going on from there, so basically we like to sum up with the program process. So I know we've had a lot of information today. Um, our website is very comprehensive. So basically as you're thinking of planning a, a CCS process, whether it's a single student you're going to advise to or a full partnership with faculty-led courses, um, as part of the pre-departure process, you want to confirm your major focus area. So where in social science, where in education do you want to focus the program on? Then we want to look at the country, like the chart. What type of country would best meet the needs of your program? Followed by confirming the time frame. Are you doing a fall or spring course? Are you doing a January term? Are you doing an intersession? Are you doing a spring break, a summer program? Next, we like to outline the budgets. Um, we all know that cost is always an a issue and a, a point of interest for individual students. So we really want to make them aware of the great CCS fundraising activities. Can they apply for any scholarships or financial aid? 
Finally, you would contact one of the CCS uh, partnership staff, myself or Studi. We could sort of walk you through this process, um, getting all of the agreements signed, getting all the paperwork. We would then get you enrolled in a program. After you're enrolled, we have what we call a program site specialist. They're the ones that are doing all of your pre-departure paperwork. So enrolling you in the insurance that Studi recommended, um, making sure if you need any visas, how you do that, getting all of your information to our in-country staff so that once you arrive, our staff meet you at the airport, they take you to the home base, they help you deal with any logistical issues and all of your scheduling. And then you get to go and volunteer and come back and have a great uh, opportunity to share with your fellow co-workers and students at your home institution. Um, finally, we just wanted to thank you and, and remind you that it's as simple as choosing when, where, and how long you want to go. Um, no question is too small, so if you are going to the process and you're a little overwhelmed, feel free to let us go. We're great at breaking it out step by step. Or if you're a pro and you just need us for the basics, either way, we're here. Um, I guess now we will um, open it up to questions. I'll go ahead and leave our contact information up, so if you did want to jot it down, it will be in the recording, um, and it is in the signature of our emails that you got through the invitation. So, so we had a couple questions throughout the um, presentation, so I don't know if anyone else had any. Um, I don't think we had any additional questions, but if there are um, any questions that anyone has now, feel free to ask those. Um, if not, I think as Megan said, we are glad that you um, took time to join us today. And now it looks like we have a question. So let's see. Um, all right. Okay. Um, so the question is about the program fee. So we'll talk about the program fee a bit more. Um, the program fee that Cross-Cultural Solutions um, request is for all participants. We do have group opportunities that are available. Megan and myself are both the managers of academic partnerships. So in this partnership, we do offer discount opportunities for groups. Those discounts begin at a minimum of six. So if you have six, a minimum of six participants, you'll receive a discount for the program fee for all, that's students, faculty, or staff members that are participating. If there are at least eight program participants, the ninth participant receives a complimentary program. These are primarily for faculty-led programs or student group leader programs to offset the cost. So if you have a faculty member that's participating, so that program fee um, for the faculty member is covered, if you have a minimum eight participants, then you'll receive a complimentary program. And again, as we mentioned before, the program fee is tax deductible. We do have a comprehensive fundraising portal um, on our website that gives very detailed information about successful fundraisers that students have participated in. We've had student participants completely raise their program fees through various initiatives on campus. And so there's some great ideas on our website, which Megan mentioned earlier is very comprehensive to cover the program fee. Um, are there any additional questions about the program fee or other components that we've covered? And I would just say, in addition, why we're waiting, um, CCS also, we do not book airfare, but we have partnerships with STA Travel, Key Travel, and some humanitarian aid flight resources. So a lot of times um, what we recommend is always doing your own research and, you know, Googling or kayaking how much is a flight from New York to Kilimanjaro, but then you can also call our flight partners to get a full budget cost. So. I'm working with an alternative break group right now in, for Guatemala, and they're able to give, you know, we know their price point, and they're able to give their full participants a budget. Um, typically, faculty-led programs, if you're developing it um, 
within the university. Developing the budget ahead of time is a natural step that you would do. Um, sometimes students or individual student groups or even individual students don't always factor in the budget at first. So that's one of the steps that we try to work with students is helping them to develop the budget so that it's a realistic figure that the students know it is possible, but where can they get the different funding sources from? Any other questions? If not, we'll probably uh, sign off here in a minute. And if you think of, <coughs> excuse me, if you think of anything afterwards, feel free to email Sudi or I. Uh, we sit next to each other, so we can always bounce ideas off of each other. And we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, meet with us today and look forward to possibly working with you in the future. Wonderful. Um, please pass along to your colleagues as well. We will be hosting a second webinar next week, Thursday, for health majors. So we also know that within the social sciences and education, public health is becoming a growing area of interest. So feel free to share with your colleagues if you found this presentation helpful for them to join us next Thursday for our health major focused uh, webinar. Um, so yeah, let's see. It looks like there may be another question. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much as well for joining us. And um, we look forward to uh, following up. Feel free again to forward any questions. And again, we hope that you can join us next week or at least forward the invitation to other faculty and staff members. Um, and uh, thank you again. Have a great afternoon.